Welcome back everybody. Another one of my model time-lapse videos. And uh, this video you're gonna see me building the uh, Ravel of Germany C45 Expediter. Um, now this, uh, basically it's the military version of the BJ-18. Uh, this is a rebox of the ICM kit, uh, which is really the only 148 scale um, Beach 18 C45 on the market. Uh, beautiful kit, uh, can be a little fiddly in places, uh, as you'll see as I do the build, um, but a very good kit. And for the price, you can't beat the Ravel of Germany reboxing. Price was a lot, lot lower than what the ICM would be. Uh, this one, I did do quite a bit of extra work on it. Um, I'm using a Belcher Bits. Uh, late Beach 18 conversion set. So it includes the longer uh, engine nacelles, it includes the um, lengthened wing leading edges, as well as the Astrodome uh, located behind the cockpit uh, for navigator training. And I finished it off using a set of Caracal decals, uh, C45 sets. I believe it was part two. Uh, he put out two different uh, Beach 18 decals. I'm pretty sure it's the C45 part two set that I used, uh, including the international ones. And I did it up as an RCAF bird from the 1950s. Uh, so it turned out really good. Outclad paint, the whole nine yards. Uh, it was, uh, did not have high hopes for this kit. I was expecting it to turn out looking a little bit uh, like a dog's breakfast and it turned out looking amazing. If you want to see the finished product, as always, stick around to the very end of the video. And on that note, let's get through it. My name is Sean and this is Sean's Aviation. And just before we get into the video, um, something I should have been doing a lot more up till now, and that is just asking you guys out there, if you enjoy what you're looking at, if you are if you like what I'm doing, go down below, uh, click on the, the like page, subscribe to my, my channel, and uh, by all means, please click on that little notification bell. If uh, that way you guys get, uh, uh, get alerted when I do get more new content up. I usually try to do the what's on my desk uh, monthly update beginning of the month. And I usually try to get a video or a series of videos released um, by the 15th, the middle of the month. So whether that's going to be a uh, tips and tricks video or an aviation history video or my time lapse videos of the previous model builds that I've got done or uh, an air show video or, you know, um, some of my new product review videos I'll be doing. So I'm going to try to get something posted uh, by the middle of the month. So uh, please, if you're enjoying this, subscribe, like. And click that notification bell. Let's move on to the video. So I started things off a little differently with this kit normally where I would be starting with the cockpit construction. In this case I decided to start with part of the Belcher Bits conversion and it revolves um, the uh, extended leading edges of the wing. I actually have to cut um, the kit leading edges off and insert the resin part and I wanted to start with that uh, just because when you have to do some major surgery on the kits it is always easier to do it before you start construction. You don't want to get like building and then realize you went too far or for example if I added those wing parts and then you go to put the fuselage on and then you realize the fuselage doesn't quite fit properly but you have you know it's, you've already started building things it's just easier hard stop start with the major conversion first that's what I did here I started with cutting the, the uh, wings to install that Belcher bits um, leading edge extension
so here we are. Uh, just a quick update uh, so you can see where I am here in the progress of this. Um, just working on this leading edge right now. So it is effectively done. Um, as you saw, I cut with the, uh, the Dremel. I cut a little short of the line, and then I used the files to sand into the line. Um, it definitely needs a bit of cleanup, um, especially, I'll zoom in a little bit here so you guys can take a look. So you can see down in these corners, um, the resin replacement is a little narrower than the actual wing. Uh, this side here doesn't seem to be quite as bad. Uh, this side seems to be the worst of the two, especially here on the bottom, and uh, I'm not entirely sure why. I'll probably just even the distance out and then work on it later, but I mean it does need some filling and sanding to clean everything up. Uh, the bottom goes together and eh, lines up quite nicely. Still needs a little bit of work here and there. Blend everything together, clean everything up, make it look uh, look good. The um, this, There's a step inside the fuselage. I'm hoping when I glue it together I'll be able to sort of work that out and I'm, I might not do a lot of sanding and filling in here I gotta wait and see how it all looks together with the seats uh, because the cockpits are so small I don't think you're really gonna notice that it's probably gonna be hidden on the interior the one thing I did have to do um, if you take a look on the inside of this piece here uh, you can see this this ridge which is where the wing would have been originally uh, that's also where so the fuselage uh, sits on top of this wing right so this part here, which is the where the wing would have been, is also supposed to be sitting on the fuselage. So it's designed so the fuselage tucks in there. So before I could finish this up, I had to ensure that the fuselage would fit. So I cut the two halves out. You'd be really careful with this. There's all these little antennas and stuff sticking out everywhere. So it's just asking to be broken off. So you gotta be really careful working on that. But as you'll see, on the bottom, there's a little notch in that wing, which fits on that little antenna right there. And the nose of it, just look at that just like it was supposed to. I mean, obviously it looks like crap right now because I haven't done any real work to clean anything up, but but it fits. So you can see how it all blends together. It gives that extension in the inboards and uh, it's looking pretty good. Um, so a little bit of cleanup inside those uh, wing roots, like I said, bit of putty, bit of sanding, blend it all together. And I think she'll look really, really good. Um, I mean, it's the kind of thing where you can't expect this to go together like butter. I am cutting and installing a resin aftermarket piece, so it is going to need a little bit of work to make it work, make it fit, but I'm very happy with how that looks. That is a great beginning. Like I said, a bit of putty, a bit of sanding, a bit of blending, and all of that should come together quite nicely. So it's looking good. It does take a bit of work. It is definitely not uh, a drop-in replacement. You need to do some work on it, but um, that's that. So what I'm going to do now um, is continue the kit as per instructions. I do have to put the uh, cowling extensions on the top, but I'll do that a little later in the build process. Um, so I want to go through and start building things as per instructions. I don't want to start puttying. I can't start puttying and sanding any of this until I get the wing glued together. And I can't glue the wing together until I do a lot of the internal structure in here for the wheel wells. So I'm probably going to get um, the fuselage at least uh, buttoned up and I can get these wings buttoned up and then I can leave off all of these seats that live inside of this wing for now and that allows me to do a lot of putting and sanding and blending and, and merging the fuselage together and making sure all that lines up and then once this is all cleaned up and ready to go um, then I can mount the fuselage and clean up those internal uh, bits. I also have to do a um, um, Astrodome, it, the, come, the Belcher Bits aftermarket kit comes with a, a vacuum form and I didn't realize this until after I started looking at this um, the kit actually has the spot for the Astrodome marked, which means one of the versions of this kit later on would actually have an Astrodome on it. So that makes my life a lot easier that I don't have to really worry about um, measuring and finding it. I can just boop, drill that hole and plop her on as long as it holds the right size, but I should be good. So that's going to make my life quite a bit easier as well. So it's, it's coming together. Uh, you know, I wanted to tackle this, this uh, hard part right off the bat before I lost my mojo and got too deep into it and Sort of breaking bits off trying to do this later on so anyways there you go that is uh, the beginnings of the uh, of the um, C45 with the aftermarket leading edges so yeah looking good very happy stay tuned uh, we'll get back to this kit and uh, start following some regular instructions
So once I get that uh, leading edge wing extension area out of the way, uh, here's where I start with the cockpit, cutting out the uh, different pieces I need for the cockpit, getting those seats installed, getting things prepped for paint, uh, sorry, prepped for paint, and then going ahead and doing all the detail work that needs to be done uh, for these interior parts.
we are, uh, partway through the build here on the uh, C45. And I figured it was time to give you guys a bit of an update on what you have been seeing uh, so far in this build. Um, so, the big thing to have seen is with all of the interior parts, which you can see here. So things like all the, uh, all the seats, I've done the interior green seat, the dark green cushion, and then I've done the decals uh, for all of the uh, seat belts. The pilot seats have both the lap and the shoulder belt, whereas the cabin seats only have the lap belts. So those are all up to date and done. The instrument panel itself, I didn't use the decal on it. I just did a bit of weathering. Uh, you're not going to see a whole lot um, once it is installed in the... Uh, um, once it's installed in the fuselage, you're not really going to see a whole lot through the windows. So I figured just a basic... Um, uh, a basic dry brushing would be enough to get the point across once all the windows and everything's painted up. Uh, so I didn't go too, too crazy with that. Um, the rear bulkhead, again, has the decal. The decals aren't going down the greatest. They have a pretty thick and flat um, um, carrier film, so I'm a little disappointed on that. Uh, many of the interior parts, I'll probably, I, I don't think I'll do a, uh, a flat coat on these. I'll just leave them as is once I put them in so that the decals don't go crazy. Uh, the engines themselves, um, not very detailed. Um, pretty basic, really. A bit of black wash kind of made them pop. But again, once they're inside the cowlings with the prop on, uh, you're not going to see a whole lot. The, uh, the big progress so far has been on the landing gear. Um, so I've, I've gone outside of, of the uh, normal construction phase. Normally I'd get the fuselage all completed and assembled before working on the wings. Um, but I need to have um, these extensions, uh, the wing extensions, the leading edge extensions, I guess. I need those uh, on the wing uh, when I finish up the fuselage to make sure everything is going to fit properly. So I need to have this done before I can put this on. I have the wings together, have the wings together. I need to do um, everything else that goes inside the wing. So I've jumped ahead a little bit just to get these done. It's also going to be uh, a little bit nice to get them finished. So as you can see here, I've got the uh, the engines are ready to go. They will be installed. Probably my next step, really. I'll get them uh, get them installed. And again, um, you can see once the cowlings are put together, if I can get the engine to sit in there properly. Um, it's the kind of model, it's really finicky in the sense that the fit is really, uh, really tight, but it's very difficult to dry fit everything um, because the fit is so tight. Uh, nothing really wants to temporarily go together. Um, the engine, as you can see, keeps flopping. But anyway, as you can see, you're not going to see much inside the engine cowling um, once it's assembled, so I'm not too, too worried about the engines. The big thing was uh, back here. So I, even though I plan to, to build it with the wheels retracted, and the instructions basically tell you to install the gear, gear door and pop the wheel in, there's nothing to hold the wheel in place. Um, do I have a gear door available? So I'll show you kind of what the problem is. So when you put the gear door in place, um, it doesn't want to fit. But yeah. So when you put the gear door in place, there's nothing really holding the wheel. It just kind of floats um, inside the gear door. So when I was looking at that, and I was trying to figure out how to do it, I realized that there was nothing holding the gear door, the wheel in place. So I came to the decision to actually mount all of the um, internal structure, mount the actual landing gear in place, and then the... Oh, nuts. Yeah, anyways. The plan was to uh, mount the gear doors in place, mount everything in its location, uh, mount all the landing gear structure, I should say, that will hold the wheel 
in the proper orientation inside the wheel well, and then the gear door itself will fit in. Of course, I managed to knock the wheel off, which, you know, just typical. Just gotta re glue that back into place. Anyways, so the, uh, the lighting gear holds it all. It's also a nice practice for my own kind of engineering um, side to, to see how it all fits together and, and, and try to make it work the way it would uh, really work. Um, so everything has been installed as it would normally be installed in the model, except the landing gear. I'll zoom in here for a bit so you guys can actually see. Um, so normally um, the landing gear would, um, if you look from the top side, you can see there's this little slot right here in this piece. And on the landing gear leg itself, there's this little notch. And this notch would fit into the slot. This piece here would sit on the upper half of this piece. As I said, this notch, uh, this, this little slot would fit into the notch. And then these, the little braces on the side, would actually sit right up against where this brace meets. So this angle here would sit right here. This little notch, the little cutout on either side of the landing gear leg would fit into the notch and would sit right about here. And then this whole bulbish top part would be sitting up on the top half of this. And that's what holds the landing gear leg in place. So normally when the gear uh, retracts, you would still effectively have this piece lined up up here. The difference is this shock strut would normally extend um, when there was no weight on the wheels <coughs> and the wheel would be in the right place. But because the, the plastic is modeled to be on the ground, the shock strut is compressed. So I had to shift this landing gear piece back a little bit. You can imagine these pieces here should be up here and then this piece here should be here. But that distance is roughly the distance that the shock strut would be extended on the real plane. So I had to, it, it, it does fit in there quite nicely though. <coughs> Excuse me. It does fit in there quite nicely, even with it retracted. Um, everything kind of sits. This piece right here, this this bulbous piece, rests on this plate. It gives me a good gluing surface. The edge of the landing gear just sits on the edge of these little tabs that hold the gear doors in place. And then the bottom of this, which is right, you can see on this side here, the um, scissor link kind of tucks perfectly up against this bulkhead. So I have gluing surface here. I have gluing surface here, and I have gluing surface on either side, and that's what's gonna hold that landing gear leg in the proper orientation, gets those wheels um, in the right location, uh, forward and aft. It also gives the wheels something to connect to, and then you still get that little bit of a bump out. And all I'll do when I go to paint is I'll just tuck some Kleenex in around this wheel. Uh, the gear doors are already painted green on the inside, so once the landing gear doors get glued in place, like that, I will just place a little bit of uh, Kleenex. I'll just kind of push it down in and around this gap and cover the tire. And then I can paint the bottom of the wing in the, oh, you're out of focus there. So there you go, landing gear doors are in place. I'll tuck a little bit of Kleenex around that wheel to, to mask it off. And then all of this will get a bare metal um, outclad treatment and the wheel will be perfectly in place. And then the gear doors sit uh, kind of the way a gear door would normally sit on a BJ-18, which is just, a little imperfect. Um, you know, BJ-18s were never considered, you know, high performance. So a lot of the, uh, um, a lot of these things would stick out a little bit. The gear doors would be connected to the landing gear. So it wouldn't be, you know, a hundred percent perfect when they retracted. Uh, but this is just a nice, you know, it'll, it'll look really good when it's all glued in place. And, uh, just give it that kind of look as if it's, you know, perfectly imperfect as it would be. So I'm very happy with how that turned off, turned out. And then as I said, when you look inside, you still see all of that structure the way you would normally see it. So I mean, you're never really gonna see anything. It's just for my own. Once I get the pictures and you guys see this video, you'll see it. But once it's all buttoned up, uh, it all effectively just, um, it just disappears. So you'll never, never, ever, ever see that again. But it's again, I just like the fact that I know it's in there. Um, you guys, after seeing this video, uh, know it's in there. Ugh, I'm tired of dropping pieces. Anyways, 
uh, you know, after watching this video, you guys know what's in there and you can understand why I did it that way. And then these wheels have some nice positive mounting uh, points inside. And then for any reason, I mean, I was thinking of possibly leaving the gear doors off, you know, as if the plane was flying without gear doors. But looking online, I don't see any pictures of them flying with the gear doors off. They always have the gear doors installed, so I'll put the gear doors on. Um, but yeah, props are ready to go. Everything's more or less ready to go. There's also uh, one more piece I got to do. Um, these here, uh, the rear bulkheads on the um, landing wheel, so you can see they fit in here and kind of like a rear spar. And they've got the little cutout around the back for the wheel to fit in, and it still fits nice and tight. Um, so everything again tucks in there nice, and it really gives it that look that you're kind of looking to have. So I'm very happy with that. Um, been poking away at this for a little bit, trying to get this out of the way, ready to go for the rest of it so I can get the wings installed. And then once I have these wings glued together, uh, and then I also, this also gives me the ability to get um, that wing spire inside uh, is what the wings glue together. So that gives me the proper shape here. And then I can have this piece glued in. I can clean this up, make sure it's gonna fit properly. Um, everything's where it needs to be. And then I can have that glued in and then I can clean up all the seams along here, get all that cleaned up, sanded down, shape the proper shape. I have the uh, extensions on the top that have to be put in place as well. Um, and then when that is done, now when I glue the fuselage together, I can ensure that everything is going to fit properly. And if I have to do any, any modifications to anything, I can do it before I have to glue it all together. So, yeah, that's the main reason I want to make sure that all of this is going to fit nice and tight and I'm not going to have any issues down the road after I assemble the fuselage to find out, you know, something doesn't line up properly and I have to go through the hassle of trying to modify everything after it's all installed. This allows me to play with the fuselage around the shape, the sanding, everything, and then I can glue the fuselage together later. So... That's what I'm working on. Um, so my next step, as I said, I'm gonna finish installing uh, those rear bulkheads. Um, the rear, the spars here, get the engines mounted in place, get the wings glued together. And then once that is all glued together, I have to clean up uh, the seams in here, get this forward piece glued into place, clean that all up, sand it all down, and then I can start uh, dealing with the fuselage fit and then once I'm happy with that, I will install all of the interior seats in here, the bulkheads in the cockpit, everything, the windows, the door, uh, get all that put together and then button it all up and get ready for paint. So this still has a little bit of work left to go on it. Um, it's a bit of a slog trying to get all of this, all of this modification done, but it's something that's gotta be done. And I figured, uh, I've got a head on the P4, I mean, and the other three kits are all, all caught up, so to say. This was the only one that was kind of lagging behind, so I figured it was time to sit down and plug away at this and, and focus on this, because I need to spend the time to get this done right. So stay tuned. Uh, you'll see all of this get put together soon, and uh, we'll get on to the uh, fun times, which is the putting and the sanding and the putting and the sanding and the putting and the sanding. So stay, stay tuned.
And here you can see the beginnings of the usual putty sand repeat. Um, it is a uh, long process, especially on something like this. Um, as you can see, I've got that, that resin extension I had to put on the front of the wings. Plus, uh, for whatever reason, ICM decided to put a nasty seam right through the bottom half of the flaps, and I need to go through and clean all that up. So this kit was a long, very tiring session of just, like as I said, putty, sand, and repeat. But uh, I got to do it.
Okay, so just a quick uh, talk here about the canopy on this. Um, as you've seen, I've been putting the canopy pieces on and the clear pieces, and I have to say I'm not a big fan of... I mean, the windows themselves are really good. I like the round windows fit nice and tight. These square windows, tolerances are nice and low. Um, the little tiny window here above the canopy, uh, again, very nice fit the way it's designed. Um, it's got a nice um, gluing surface. So on the inside, the window has a nice sort of flat, why are you not focusing on this? It has a nice little kind of big flat area right here that fits up against the fuselage, it gives you a nice gluing surface. And the window itself fits nice and tight inside. Why is this not focusing? Uh, it fits nice and tight inside the um, fuselage. What I don't like are these side windows for the canopy. The way the canopy is designed to have these two side pieces, one on here, one here, and then a flat panel which fits in the middle. I haven't attempted to put the flat panel piece on yet. I have a distinct feeling that there's going to be some really weird seams um, along here where it fits. I kind of wish it would have just been a single piece that you plop in that, or, or put a seam down the middle. I mean, I'm assuming that the canopy probably has a center seam. No, it doesn't. So I can kind of see why they did it that way, but I don't know. It's not the easiest way of putting the windows together. Um, both of these side pieces, I'm sure you saw me with the clippers, um, both of these side window pieces have a little piece here at the front that sticks out a little bit farther than it should, so it doesn't fit, so you have to trim it back. So on this one, I trimmed it back just a hair too short, so now I got a little gap I gotta fill. And on this side, I cut the angle off just a little bit wrong. So why are you not focusing? My God. Um, I cut the angle off just a little bit wrong here, so it's a weird little corner I gotta fix. The other issue is the fuselage has a bit of a twist that the window doesn't, so you gotta kinda put some pressure on this clear piece in all the different areas while you're gluing it to get them to bite and fit. And then of course, I was putting pressure on the window and I added a bit of liquid glue and it ran underneath and then up under my finger and I didn't realize until I moved my finger, so I put a very nice fingerprint right into the clear window. I'll have to find a way to, I'm not gonna really sand it, I don't think. I'm probably just gonna live with it. I mean, not all planes had perfect windows. Some of them had defects and cracks and delaminations that would've happened in service. I'm just gonna have to live with that. But I'm, I'm, I'm just not very happy with this. There's, it's too fiddly. There's too much going on. There's too much uh, area where things can go wrong. Um, and uh, if you don't get these side pieces in perfect, then that forward window will not fit properly and you're going to end up with really weird seams that you're going to try to fill and it's clear and you can't sand and it's just a mess. I kind of wish they had thought up a better way of doing it but I mean in their defense it is a very tough um, canopy design to um, to work with. Um, there's a lot of panels. It's, it's uh, not You can't do it in two halves. It's got to be either a single piece or three pieces or four pieces um, so I can kind of see what they were going for, but uh, yeah, just beware, be warned if you are attempting to build this, um, it is going to be a bit of a pain and this will take lots of extra work to make sure you get all of that the way it's supposed to be. So anyways, moving on and uh, we'll uh, get some more of this uh, fuselage interior work done.
here I start masking uh, with the, uh, the fuselage windows. I decided to mask before I assembled the fuselage uh, just because the way the um, windows fit into place, uh, stripped glued into the inside, um, I was worried that while I was doing the masking, they would actually pop out. So I decided to put the masking on while I'm able to use my finger on the backside and actually hold that window in place. Uh, just make sure I don't run into any issues with those things popping out and not being able to reinstall them once the fuselage uh, gets installed.
So my fear with the cockpit of the C45 has borne out, uh, as it would be see, um, start over, I don't know what I just said. So my fears of the cockpit of the C45 have come to fruition. The front windshield does not fit nearly as well as I would like. So as you would have just seen, I had to do quite a bit of sanding to get this window to fit in top to bottom. It was quite a bit of overlap, so some sanding on the top, some sanding on the bottom. I did manage to squeeze that in there uh, so that it fit, glued it in place. Also the sides stuck out quite a bit. There's still a little bit of a lip here, but there's only so much I can do without destroying the, um, the clear panes of the window. So I'm being very careful to make sure that I don't go too far in there and start to scratch that clear window because it'd be almost impossible to clean that up after the fact. So I have I have glued it in. I cleaned up those edges as much as I could. I put a bit of white glue around the edges to uh, fill in all the gaps. I've had to pull this masking off because I was just slightly too close to the edge with that tape and I'm gonna have to kind of rejig everything to make sure that I have a clean, um, a clean edge on that. I am very, very disappointed. I knew this would be finicky, as I'm sure you all heard me say earlier if you have been watching this video and not just jumping forward, looking for the cool parts. Um, I was worried about this fit. I knew it would not fit very well. It's a very I understand why they designed it like this. Trying to make a clear piece this size um, could be difficult, but making it a three piece like that, you're bound to run into the issues that I just ran into, which is just the fit is not nearly what I was hoping it would be. So I've cleaned these edges up about as much as I'd like without doing any crazy damage to everything. So I'm just gonna have to accept it and move on. Just try to get as much of these little edges here cleaned up as possible. Um, I mean, the, the, the tell will be when I get a bit of a paint on this. So my next step here, I'm going to remask all these windows across the front, get them masked. Uh, I'm gonna get a coat of interior green on here. I'm probably gonna end up, this is the mix I normally use, the black and the zinc chromate, and I don't feel like mixing up a custom mix just to spray the windows. So I'll probably end up using my bronze green on the inside of the windows. Uh, it's the same color that's gonna be on the, some other parts that are inside here. So I'm probably just gonna use this uh, to clean up, the, to do those windows. You're not gonna see much anyways uh, when you look in, but it'll be just enough to show that there's some green on the inside of that. And hopefully that will give me a good feel for what this is all gonna look like once I get that green on it. And I might have to do a little bit more touch up here and there. Uh, and then, uh, after I get that window painted, it's basically time to start gluing on the uh, the wing and the fuselage. I do need to drill out um, this hole right here. I, uh, the Belcher Bits kit for the wing included the Astrodome, which I have to install, so I am going to have to drill this out. Um, I'm going to try to use my step bit, just drill that out, and then apply the um, Belcher Bits set, which, to be honest, I don't even know where that is right now at the moment. I have to dig that out. I, yeah, I don't even know where it is. I got so much stuff kicking around in here. I gotta figure out what happened to, uh, figure out what happened to that. But it's around here somewhere. It couldn't have gone far. I hope it didn't go too far. Ooh. Might be running into a bit of a problem here. Ah, there it is. See, look at that. So there we go. I've got the, the vacuum form. Um, Astrodome, so I'm going to have to drill out that hole and I'm, again I'll probably end up having to paint some green around that and then the Astrodome will be uh, glued over top of that hole right there. So yeah that's also going to be a bit of fun, uh, fun to do because of uh, just the nature of gluing this down. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that and have a nice strong bond. I'm going to try what the, uh, just the standard, uh, this should, it should be styrene, so it should go down without a problem with just a bit of styrene glue. But, uh, yeah, so that's going to be a fun, uh, 
a fun little uh, a fun little task to get that down. Let's check the instructions and see what it says. The Astro Dome kit modifications. Astro. After joining the fuselage, house stuff thirteen cut a eight point nine millimeter diameter hole in the cabin roof, centered on the first set of cabin windows, which is exactly where that hole is located. So it looks like we might be in luck. And they said it's 8.9 mil. So let's turn on my fancy dancy, which is completely dead right now. So yay for that. 8.9 mil, roughly, roughly right there. So let's just see if that, yeah, see that hole in the fuselage is just slightly smaller than 8.9, but that is almost exactly the size of that. So I'm basically going to drill that hole out and there might be a small lip on the inside but I can always ream it out just enough to match the size of that Astrodome which I think is what I'm going to do. I'm going to end up drilling that out right to the edge and then uh, matching that with just a little bit of sanding to make sure that fits. So yay me! More work, more modifications but it's coming along. Um, I am happy with, uh, so far overall I'm happy with it. This is definitely not a Spiganer kit. This is something you do need to have quite a bit of uh, experience before you tackle, but I am happy with it so far. So stay tuned. We'll get these windows masked. We'll get that hole drilled. We'll get that Astrodome glued in, and then we can get the fuselage glued to the wings, everything, all the seats, all of that stuff can start happening and uh, get some paint on this thing soon because this model is really starting to kick me in the ass, and I'm really beginning to get a little tired of working on it. I just kind of want to get to the paint stage, but uh, yeah, it's going to look good when it's done. There you go, C45, stay tuned, we'll get this finished up. Oh, you know what I also have to do? I have to drill and mount a post to hold that up, so I still got to do that too before I glue everything together, make sure that's going to work properly, so yay, because I only have a seat right there, which means I have to go behind that bulkhead, which I was hoping not to have to do. So I'm going to have to drill here and hopefully mount something that will not topple. So, yeah. I might have to do a, a, a brass tube with, uh, sorry, no, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the aluminum tube for a brass rod so the brass rod has something to stick into and doesn't flop around. It's going to sit in there nice and tight once I get that aluminum tube popped in there. So. Yeah, a little bit more work than I was hoping for. I could always go up to the bottom of that, but there's not a lot of uh, space to hold on to. So, anyways, yeah, more figuring out, more modification. It's always something. Stay tuned. Quick update on the C45 here. I did, um, as I'm sure you've seen if you've been watching, um, I've got the fuselage primed. I went ahead and drilled the hole for the um, uh, Astrodome. I did it off camera just because I didn't want to uh, have to deal with thinking about the filming and the angle and everything else while I was trying to do it. I just wanted to get a nice clean, clean cut. Uh, in the process, I did manage to pop um, this little window here, part of the front part, so I got to glue that back into place. I also did manage to pop the seam uh, slightly, so I'm going to clean that up. Just use a bit of glue on the inside. Uh, luckily, it's not going to like offset at all, so I literally just need to dab a small amount of glue just here around the front window, and then push that back into place. Just to ensure that's got a nice clean or a, a good seam on it, so. Basically just like that. And then um, just along that top seam, I'm just going to run a little bit of a glue seam in there. Same on the front half, just make sure it's got a nice solid. There. Give it a bit of a squeeze at the top, make sure that's got a nice 
wand. There we go. And then I'll uh, I'll paint black. I uh, by I'll just paint brush paint some black around there. And then when I glue, I cut that out. And when I glue the astrodome on, it's going to take up and fill the, all that space. And the black will hide any gaps on the outside. And then it just needs to be masked off. And then uh, the rest are painted. So it's uh, it's definitely coming along. Nice little uh, addition, including that and. Uh, Drilling it out, so I basically drilled the pilot hole with a standard drill, and then I used one of those step uh, drills. If you had seen my um, how-to video on doing the bases, actually that's not even out yet. I will have a how-to do on bases. I apologize. Scratch all of this, go back, and make sure I stop talking after the drill. So I drill a, a pilot hole with a standard drill, and then I use one of these step drills, uh, which is a nice. Um, it cuts a little differently than a standard drill bit, where a standard drill bit kind of digs and pulls, this scrapes on the outside so it doesn't uh, pull and, and, and do as much damage to the plastic. So I uh, just pilot hole uh, in the middle with a regular drill and then I use this to bore it down to the right diameter. So there we go. Uh, as I said, it's primed. I've got that done. Um, not too much longer. There's a little bit of cleanup I need to do under here. So yeah, just a little bit of putty cleanup underneath. Uh, the top is looking good. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, it's going to be painted black, so it's going to hide a lot of those imperfections. But uh, yeah, so just a little bit of cleanup underneath here. And then um, get that astrodome in place. And then the seats, and I can glue the fuselage to the wing. And then clean up all these seams and move on to the next step. So there's still quite a bit of work i got to do. I probably won't fix these seams until I fix that seam. I'll do all of that at the same time, blend it all together. So uh, still poking away at it, still going strong. Um, but uh, it's looking good, so keep an eye out. We'll uh, keep working away on this.
And here you can see yet again, just more putty, sand, repeat, uh, cleaning up those seams of the wings meet the fuselage. Um, as well, when I drilled the hole and mounted the tube for the stand, um, it uh, needed a bit of work around that just to clean it up and blend everything in. So again, just like before, quite a bit of uh, puttying and sanding to do on the belly of this, uh, this aircraft.
And here you can see me starting with the masking. Um, I wasn't really clear in the video, but I did get the white painted on um, basically the wingtips and tail, anywhere that had to be painted red, as well as the top of the fuselage. Uh, so once I got that white painted, I began the masking process to start painting the white. Uh, you will clearly see how, how many layers of painting go into this. There's white, I mask off and paint the red, then I mask off um, uh, the red and the white, and I paint some aluminum for the fabric covered areas, then I mask all of that off and give it a coat of gloss black, and then metalizer, and then pull off all of the masking tape. So there's quite a few days, actually I think it was almost two weeks on and off of uh, different layers of paint, allowing that paint to cure and set between the different layers. So quite an involved paint scheme, probably one of the more involved paint schemes I've had in a while. So here we are, uh, sort of a mid-build update on this, middle mid-painting update, I guess you could say. Uh, so as you've seen, I did get uh, quite a bit of painting done on this already, uh, stage by stage. Um, so I have the, uh, most importantly, I have the, um, the white painted across the top. I do have to do a few touch-ups. I had a little bit of overspray um, on the red back here. And I just noticed now there's a little bit of overspray on some silver here in the side. Uh, so I probably do that uh, before I do anything else. It's just mask off this rear part, uh, mask off uh, the lower fuselage and wing section here and just give this top section just a quick once over in the white again. Uh, make sure it is uh, nice and clean before I mask off for the rest. I could do it at the end as well. Um, I don't know yet. We'll see uh, what order I decide to do this in. Uh, the most important though I got the white painted. When I painted the white, I painted the tails and the wingtips white. I have then gone ahead and painted those red. I have since masked off and I painted um, the fabric covered control surfaces, the elevators, sorry, the uh, ailerons, the flaps, the elevators, and the rudders um, have been painted with aluminum paint. My next step, I'm gonna let this aluminum paint uh, dry probably for a solid 24 hours. Um, and uh, then I will mask off uh, the ailerons and flaps. And, and well, I mean the tail, I don't have to. Uh, I do on the bottom. I'll have to do a little bit of masking here across the bottom. But uh, most, I mean, I'm, it's coming right along. But the most important part is going to be um, getting the, uh, the, this, this tail, the, the white masked off. So a cheat line here, a nice straight line somewhere down the middle of that fuselage. That's got to get masked off a little bit here under the tail. needs to be masked off. Uh, and then the ailerons and the flaps will get masked off and then uh, everything else will get coated in a gloss black primer in preparation for the Alclad aluminum. Um, so it's, uh, it is coming along. It's a slow process. Paint, let it dry, mask, paint again, let it dry, you know, stage by stage by stage. But it's coming along. Um, you can start to really see uh, the finished product here uh, when it's going to be done with the uh, the Alclad, especially on these tail sections, the, the Alclad with the red and the aluminum and all the white and the cheat line and the Canadian markings. And it's definitely going to be uh, an interesting, an interesting look when I'm done. So it's, it's a process. It's taking a while, but I think it will definitely, definitely pay off at the end. So keep, uh, keep watching here. Uh, my, my, my next actual update like this will probably be at the end of the painting process. Um, and then uh, we can take a look and see how everything uh, how everything turned out at the end. So there we have it. Stay tuned. Uh, more painting. Yay.
Okay, here we are, mid-build checkup on the C45, and if you've been following the video up till now, you would have seen that I have finished, for the most part, the painting. So this was a bit of a process. Um, it took quite a bit to get to where I am. Now, uh, I started painting the white, uh, which included the top of the fuselage, and I painted the horizontal stabilizers and the wingtips, top and bottom. From there, I masked, uh, and then I painted the red. And then once that was dry, I pulled all those masks off, I remasked, and I painted the aluminum for the flaps, the um, ailerons, the elevator, and the rudders. Once that was done, I peeled off a bunch of masks, I remasked the airframe again, and I painted it gloss black, and then the Alclad aluminum. And you can see I got the tails done as well, the, the uh, uh, aluminum paint versus the Alclad aluminum metalizer. So I gave it a bit of a, so it took, I mean, you're looking at, and then once I was all done, I had a bit of overspray on this upper part, so I had to remask and touch up the white. So you're looking at a total of one, two, three, four, five, basically six layers of paint and six different painting sessions on this aircraft right now, and I'm still not done. I have hit the whole thing with a coat of Alclad gloss, so it is ready for decals. Once I have the whole thing decaled, it will all be hit with another layer of Alclad gloss. And once that has about 48 hours to really set and dry, I have to go ahead and mask off again because the tops of the cowlings and the front of the nose section here, the uh, anti-glare panel, will have to be painted black um, when I do that. So there's still quite a bit of steps that need to be done on this uh, before it's going to be finished. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, stay tuned, and uh, we will get this thing finished. Uh, decal is coming up next, but I am very happy with it. I love, love the look of this bird. Um, ooh, that was close. And I still have to finish the base. I have to do the base. I feel like I'm going to do a nameplate on this. Uh, we'll see. Uh, keep it simple, I guess. But, uh, yeah, there we go. Stay tuned for decals and the finishing of the C45.
here you can see I'll start masking for the flat black areas. Uh, that includes the anti-glare on the nose, the tops of both cowlings, the de-icing boots on the leading edge of the wings. Uh, and then for the rest of it, I painted it by hand. So the de-icing boots on the horizontal stabilizers, the vertical stabilizers, as well as that ADF football. All of that I paint uh, flat black by hand. Uh, it's just, it's very, very small um, areas and mask, especially on those vertical stabilizers to mask that and try to keep an, a perfect curve would be very difficult. So hand painting was the easiest way to ensure I get a, uh, a good looking area without increasing the chances of peeling out any decals or paint. So here we are, quick update on the C45. As I'm sure you've seen, I have got quite a bit done on this. Uh, the decals are done, um, gloss sealed. I got the flat, uh, the flat black areas done, the anti-glare the anti on the nose, the cowlings. I did the um, de-icing boots. I painted the de-icing boots on the tail uh, by hand. They're not perfect, uh, but I'll live with them. They're not really gonna be noticed uh, that much, so I'll live with that. Um, the biggest issue I had, and I'm a little pissed, and I don't know why, is these decals here did not um, settle at all. You can actually see back here where, I'll zoom in just a hair so you can actually see what I'm talking about. So at the rear half of the decal, the solvice set actually melted the decal and caused all the ink to run, which was a little annoying, but I'm like, you know what? I can live with that, it is what it is. But then when I masked off this forward part, it just peeled the decal right off the wing, which means somehow back here it melted, but up here it never settled at all. And you can still see there's sections of the decal where I can get my fingernail under and peel. So somehow half of the decal settled and half of the decal didn't. And the same thing happened on this side. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna have to replace those decals. And the issue is I don't have, um, I don't have any decals of that size of the old style leaf, the pre-1967 leaf. I don't have um, so I'm basically going to have to replace them with a modern roundel and it's not going to be a hundred percent accurate uh, but I don't have a choice um, I, I don't have any other choice unless I buy a whole other sheet of decals which I'm not going to go down for just for two sets of roundels I may be able to find something very close in some of my other decal sheets but then I have to split up other sheets and I don't want to take a part away from another sheet that I might then need in the future. Uh, so I'm gonna shy away from that for now. I'm just gonna straight on replace these with the modern roundels that came in the Caracal decal sheet that I used. So I'm gonna put those on. Down the road, if I find I have extras the same way, I can always lay them on top with the correct period roundel. But that I'll have to do at some point. But other than that, this is basically finished. I'm not doing any more sealing. The aircraft has had a gloss coat from Alclad, and then the flat black is painted, so the parts that need to be gloss are gloss, the parts that need to be flat are flat. There's gonna be no more sealing. I'm doing no weathering on this whatsoever. The only thing I'm gonna do is a little bit of exhaust underneath uh, just from the exhaust. Other than that, there will be absolutely no weathering on these. These tended to be kept relatively clean in service, so I'm not gonna go crazy with the weathering. 
at all, really, nothing. This is it, no block wash, no nothing. Fix those decals, do some exhaust staining, and then I can start, uh, there's a little few little things I gotta paint by hand, uh, wingtip lights, the uh, direction finding, I can glue the tails on, uh, put the wheels on, props, pull the maskings off, like it's basically finished, this is 99% there, so um, I'm gonna focus on the other guys with the weathering, and I'll get back to this at the very end and finish it up, but there you go, it's painted, it's 99% there, oh, base, I gotta finish the base still, so that'll be a project to do later, but uh, yeah, it's coming along, so there you go, C45 update. So here we are, we're at the end of the uh, the build, uh, and there's the finished product. Uh, turned out looking good. Uh, I was very worried with this build, especially with the um, resin um, um, upper nacelles. There we go, sorry, brain fart. The resin upper nacelles and the resin leading edge insert that had to be put into this. I was very, very worried uh, with how that would look with all the work. Um, I haven't necessarily been the the luckiest when it has come to resin work like that, uh, so I'm very happy that that turned out as good as it did, especially with the Alclad finish. There were some issues I had with the Alclad finish. Um, I had some issues with the uh, Alclad actually drying sort of in middle, midstream before it hit, so I built up some powder in a couple of places. It took a little bit of effort to clean that up. Uh, but other than that, and overall, extremely happy with, uh, with the, how this turned out. Um, and it is the very first Beach 18 I've ever built, and uh, it's great to have that added to the collection. I'm a huge fan of these sort of 1950s, 1960s RCAF Beach 18s. This scheme is just awesome, and it looks great on a Beach 18. So that's the final build. I will um, I'll finish it off with a few uh, pictures of the uh, final photo shoot I did of this. Uh, but there you go. That's ICMs, uh, in this case reboxed by Ravel of Germany, 148 scale Beach 18. 
done up in the RCAF scheme using the amazing, and I can't say enough, Caracal decals. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching guys, and as always, if you are interested in any of the content you see, you can access my website at www.shawns-aviation.com. Uh, you can see all the uh, latest pictures of aircraft and museums and the build logs of all of my current models and past models on that site. And if you're interested in any of this content, uh, please click the subscribe button here on uh, YouTube to follow more. Thank you very much, and see you guys next time.